Hi everyone, welcome back to the final installment of Collodion Basics. So at this point, you know how to pour a plate, but before I leave you, I want to show you some basic silver bath maintenance. So, keeping your silver bath in good shape is one of the most important parts of continued wet plate photography. Uh, the silver bath can very easily fall into disrepair, and if it does, it's going to reflect negatively in your plates. At some point, if your silver bath gets bad enough, you may even find yourself unable to make an image. So, how do we keep the silver bath in tip-top shape? First of all, I recommend at the end of every session, filtering your silver bath from its tank back into the bottles you store it in. You can use filter paper for this, it works great. Um, cotton balls in the base of a funnel are also a perfectly good option. Now, every now and then, you're going to need to do some basic maintenance on your silver bath. That's because over time, it's gonna pick up both contaminants from the environment, as well as alcohol and ether from the collodion, which, you know, keep it from working as well as fresh, pure silver bath. So, the remedy for this is to take your silver bath, Put it in a clear container with an open top. I like to use just a big old mason jar and I rubber band a piece of cheesecloth to the top just to keep random leaves and sticks and insects and so on from getting into it. And you just set it out in the sun for a day, potentially multiple days if necessary. Now what this does is two things. First of all, it just allows the solvents, right, the alcohol and the ether in the silver bath to evaporate out the top. The other thing that it does is the sunlight causes the silver nitrate to react with any organic contaminants in the bath, which will then turn black and fall to the bottom of the bath. At that point, you'll be able to filter them out. Now, I went ahead and I made a little time lapse of sunning this silver bath. Unfortunately, it's not a very dramatic time lapse because I haven't made a whole lot of plates since the last time I cleaned this bath. So even after sunning, this one is still relatively clear. You will find, however, that if you sun a silver bath that has been used a lot since its, since its last maintenance, it will get very cloudy. So the first step after you've sunned the bath is to filter it to get all the contaminants out. Now, there are different approaches you can take. You can filter through filter paper in a funnel. You can filter through cotton balls in a funnel. Either of those methods, you might need to make multiple passes. And if that's the case, just keep going, refiltering and refiltering until your silver bath is nice and clear. Something that I've been experimenting with lately and that I've had pretty good luck with is using these Stericup units. Um, this is a Stericup millipore. These are intended to be single-use units for labs. Um, I guess the idea is that they have filters in them so fine that they actually sterilize what they filter. However, if you don't need them perfectly sterile, you can reuse them. Um, I'm not sure how many times. I'm working on figuring that out now. This one's starting to get a little bit grungy, but it still works. And you just hook them up to an air pump, uh, which creates a vacuum in the lower chamber and it'll suck whatever liquid you're filtering through from the top and it just comes out very clean in the bottom. So let's go ahead and run our silver bath through this. Now you want to be very careful removing the cheesecloth from the top here because if the rubber band snaps while you're removing it you might get bits of cheesecloth in your silver bath. So just be careful there. You have to be very, very careful when you're pouring any large volume of silver bath like this. So I'm going to just very carefully pour as much as I can into this stair cup. That's about one liter worth of silver bath right there. I'm going to get a paper towel here and just wipe off the edge of the container I poured out of. 
Now I'm going to throw the lid on here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on my air pump and let this run through. And in just about one and a half minutes there, we've filtered an entire liter of silver bath, perfectly clear. It was a little bit cloudy to begin with, and at the end, it's just beautiful and clear. So, the next step is to take the silver bath and put it into a graduated cylinder. I'm using my 500 milliliter cylinder here because this is a pretty good volume of silver bath. Now, there are two things that we need to check and potentially modify about our silver bath. The first thing we're going to look at is the pH. So we test the pH using pH strips. Uh, you're going to want to get some good pH strips. Uh, so these are the type that actually have multiple multiple squares on each strip, which help you to get a more accurate reading. So I'm just gonna pull one of these strips out, dip it in the silver bath, and check it against the guide on the package here. So this is telling me that my pH is right around four, which I'm actually pretty happy with. So, generally speaking, you want your silver bath to be around five or lower in pH. Some people say four or lower. Four is definitively a safe value. Five is the point where you're gonna be kind of pushing it. Now a slightly higher pH can make your plates a little bit faster, but if the pH gets too high, eventually you're gonna to start to get what's called chemical fog, which is essentially the same as fog from a light leak. Um, it's going to obscure the images on your plates if that happens, you just need to lower the pH of the bath. So, if the bath had been higher in pH than it was, I would have used this nitric acid. This is a 7% nitric acid solution. And generally speaking, I just add three or four drops at a time and see what it does to the pH each time. Um, and what you're going to want to do is, if your pH came out high, just add that nitric acid until you get it down to about 4. You don't want to go far below 4. You don't want your silver bath to be super acidic. But if you go a little bit below, it's not the end of the world. Now the second thing we need to check is the specific gravity of the silver bath. Now, a fresh silver bath that's just pure water and silver nitrate if it's 9% silver bath, it should have a specific, a specific gravity reading of just a hair under 1.07. I will calculate the exact number and put it on the screen later. But that's basically what you're looking for, is just a hair under 1.07. The way you measure this is with just any old hydrometer. So these are super common, easy to find. People use them for brewing. Very frequently what you'll find is that they come marked to, they come marked 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, up to 100, and that's actually a couple decimal places over. So if you're at the 10 marker, that means your specific gravity is actually 1.010. 20 is 1.02, etc. So I'm just going to drop this into the cylinder, and when I say drop, I actually mean set gently. And the specific gravity here is coming out much too high at about 1.08, a little bit shy of it. So that is one possible outcome of sunning your silver bath. You may evaporate water out of it, which will cause it to gain a higher density. So if that happens, you're just going to want to add some distilled water until it gets back down to the desired specific gravity.
I'm gonna add a little bit for my bottle of distilled water here. I'm gonna mix it up, measure it again, and see where that gets us. Now it bears noting here that this is not a perfect test. I mentioned that the specific gravity of a fresh silver bath is gonna be a hair shy of 1.07, and that's because that is pure silver and water. With other contaminants mixed in as well, such as the solvents from your collodion, the specific gravity may not be a perfect indicator as it would be if the silver bath was just silver and water. That being said, I still find that it works as a pretty good indicator. If your specific gravity is around 1.07, you're probably gonna be fine. It's also important to make sure when you're measuring this that your hydrometer is actually floating in the cylinder. If your hydrometer is resting on the bottom of the cylinder, you're not actually getting a reading. All that's telling you is how deep the solution is in the cylinder. Another very important note is that you should use a glass stirring rod. Do not get lazy and use your hydrometer as a stirring rod. I say that because I have done that and I have broken a hydrometer open inside of the cylinder that I was maintaining my silver bath in. That dumped the little lead pellets all into my silver bath and I had to frantically filter it and then re-sun it to try to fix some of the damage I had done. So, learn from my mistake and use a stirring rod for your silver bath. I'm almost down to 1.07 here, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more distilled water. If you add water and it turns murky, that means that the water you added was not distilled. Um, sometimes water that is sold as distilled will actually have minerals in it. So if that happens to you, you are unfortunately going to have to go back to where you started sun the bath and filter it all over again and redo your maintenance with better distilled water. This is a problem that thankfully I have not personally encountered. Still a little bit high. Gonna add a little bit more water. Now the other possible outcome here is that you may put your hydrometer in the silver bath and find that it has actually gone low. The reason for that is that every time you prepare a plate in your silver bath, you are of course taking a little bit of silver out of it. So it basically comes down to how much silver have you lost from preparing plates versus how much water have you lost from sunning the silver bath. If you find yourself with too low of a specific gravity, then you'll want to do the opposite of what I'm doing here and add silver nitrate crystals. Now you could take the volume of your silver bath, its specific gravity, do a little bit of math, to figure out exactly how much silver you need to add to bring it up to the desired, sil desired specific gravity. Personally, I've never done that. I just tap in a little bit of silver at a time, mix it, and see where it's gotten me. Likewise, I could have calculated the amount of water to add to get this to the specific gravity I wanted, but I usually find it easier to just add a little bit at a time, keep checking the specific gravity, and when it gets to where I want, I just stop. So, this silver bath now has the desired specific gravity. It has the desired pH level. This is about as close to perfect as a silver bath which has been used is going to get. Now, if this level of maintenance should prove insufficient, you will need to do heavy maintenance on your bath. And that is something that I'm not even going to attempt to teach because I've never had to do it myself. Uh, if you're good about keeping your bath clean, sunning it periodically, and you don't shoot too frequently, you may never or very rarely have to do heavy maintenance. 
But if you're shooting a lot, if your bath is seeing a lot of use and it's seeing a lot of contamination, you may occasionally have to do heavy maintenance. If that is the case, uh, you're going to want to consult a good manual and follow the steps that you find there. So that covers Collodion Basics. Um, I'd love to hear what you thought of the series. Um, sorry for any mistakes made along the way. And I hope you had a good time, and I hope this gets you started making some plates. Um, by all means, if you make a plate, I'd love to see it. And if there's something else you'd like to hear about or, you know, follow-up topics you would be interested in, let me know in the comments, and I'm always down to do more. Happy shooting!